My name's Henry Chang. I'm with the live performance electronic act, Soul in the Machine. My official band name is Stainless, but my in-house band nickname is The Mueller, the origins of which will remain confidential. As for the nickname Stainless, that's very obvious where that came from, all this stainless steel stuff you see behind me. Yeah, I was trained classically and later on learned jazz, played out in restaurants and stuff, and I had this roommate that used to go to raves all the time. Electronica, you just got the DJ up there and he's sort of looking down at his decks and just looked at that and was thinking, well, this could definitely be presented in a more visual fashion and more performance-oriented fashion. That was sort of the seed of the idea. And for a couple of years, I was in the business of fabricating sculpture and contemporary furniture. And it was just natural to meld that into fabricating our instruments. Yeah, so actually you can probably see the progression of how these curves on these chairs ended up being used in that drum wall back there. My name is Eric Stauber, and I'm a member of Soul and the Machine, producer of the project in terms of making everything work and pulling it all together functionally. Soul and the Machine is a compelling project for me because it al allows integration of creativity and technology. Henry started this project, I believe, in 1999. I'd say the first big success was when we made the laser harp, which is almost the same things we're using today. The electronics have changed, but visually it's nearly the same. And I can remember that day when we turned it on and we're like, ooh, that, that looks really cool. This is the laser harp. In concept, it's actually quite simple. There's lasers up here that shoot laser light into the photo sensors down here. This is uh, Fred the bird, by the way. When you play the harp, you intersect the laser beam, the photo sensor senses the difference in the amplitude of the light, and a little computer detects which beam you've intersected and sends a message. The drum wall is in its fourth or fifth revision. It, we've gone through lots of changes. It's a glorified MIDI drum set, and it's facing away from the audience so that the audience can see all the drums. It's very tall, and you can get very big motions with it. When we strike this, the, it causes a vibration which gets picked up by a sensor, which goes to a module in the rack over there. The electronic superhighway gets all sorts of little virtual cars speeding on it every time we hit one of these drums. The drum kit is our newest instrument. It blends a lot of new functionality that we haven't had before, and it also really incorporates the curvy theme. There really is hardly a straight line on it. We're up here on the second story of the stage. Up here is the, our latest drum set. This set is similar to an acoustic set in layout, so lots of drummers can come here and sit down and feel comfortable even though it's an electronic set and it looks really crazy. It's functionally similar to an acoustic set. Uh, my name is Brian Cantrell. Everybody calls me Nucci. I am the drummer in uh, Soul and the Machine. I'm sitting behind a drum set that uh, Henry has uh, designed and the concept was to try to get away from a conventional drum set. Uh, it plays just like a regular Drum set, snare drum, toms. The only thing that we've left like a regular drum set is the cymbals. And obviously, all the drums light up when they're played. I'm actually a piano player, but I play more marimba in this band because it has more visual impact. This marimba is, I believe, the fourth marimba that we've gone through. These two sculptures, double helix sculptures, are light sculptures and they respond to what I'm playing on the marimba. And so every little, um, I guess, bass pair looking thing is programmable so we can animate things and change colors and make it an interesting light show based on what I'm playing. These things are tremendously overbuilt. This uh, originally was made because some of the music that we were composing had a real heavy four on the floor electronica. 
boom, boom, boom beat that uh, people like to dance to. We made this little bass drum that would have a more dramatic visual representation of that than just the drummer hitting his normal kick drum. Some parts of live electronic music, there's guys running a keyboard or a computer and they're morphing some of the synthesizer sounds using knobs. So what we've done with this thing is uh, this, this thing will control certain parameters and basically it's a gigantic glorified knob. That's what this is, we call it the slide. This is the command central of Soul on the Machine. These are the synthesizers. That's what generates just about every sound that you hear. These are the MIDI routers. So that takes all the information from the various instruments and kind of combines it all and sends it to the appropriate synthesizer. And here's our big mixer. Another thing we use is an uninterruptible power supply. Just in case the power goes out in a venue, we'll still be up and running and then just some computers that help us run the show. This is our warehouse where we do all the fabrication and we also use it as a rehearsal space. As you can see, our instruments sort of take up a fair amount of room and it's nice for us now to have this nice spacious space. This right here is what we call our dirt room. Basically, there's a bunch of cutting and grinding going on in here. This piece of machinery right here is top secret. For me personally, there's no real quote goal with the Soul in the Machine project. The thing that I like about it is the rainbow itself, just the whole journey, being able to build these wild, more exotic instruments and to be able to share them with people. And this is definitely one way of doing that.